So hey, this is Chris here. Um, I decided to spend a little bit of time and make you guys another example. A bunch of you guys might be working on Carol problems right now, and you might have realized that like some of these problems are pretty hard, especially like checkerboard Carol and midpoint Carol. And for some of you, this is your first time programming, and it might feel like, oh, I would just appreciate a few more examples. So that's what this is. I made you one extra example. It doesn't solve checkerboard Carol, but it solves a problem that's slightly similar. And most importantly, it solves a problem and I go over the thinking of pre and post conditions in the context of a while loop. Uh, and that's really similar to the thought process, like the conceptual idea we want you to learn while you're programming Check and Board Carol. So here's one extra example. If in addition to this extra example, you still would like some help or you have some more clarification, concept questions, or you're having trouble with your code, don't forget that tonight from 6 p.m. to midnight, we have layer hours. There will be a, a whole team of staff members ready to help you out. Um, but yeah, check out this video. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you do enjoy it, let me know and maybe I can make some more later in the quarter. Okay, before we do anything, I just want to show you an example of the program that I'd like us to all write together. I guess you're at home, so I'll be doing most of the writing. Okay, we are going to write a program that's very exciting. So Carol is going to start in the bottom left corner of a world, and that world we don't know how big it is. Um, but once we run our program, Carol is going to fill the entire world with these exciting colors. Um, and this is not a predefined pattern. What Carol's going to do is, at every single corner, Carol is either going to paint that corner green or blue. That's just for artistic effect. That's really not the point of the demo. The point of today's demo is to reinforce the hardest idea in the checkerboard Carol problem, which is how do you get post conditions, preconditions to match up in the context of a while loop. Okay, and you know, I said that this works in a world of any size, but at this point you have no reason to believe me, but I can show you ooh, how beautiful it does work on different size worlds. Hee <laughs> hee, let's try it on something else. One by you're like, oh, that's such a hard task. Not so hard for this program. And the reason it's not so hard is not because I've written a really long program, but because I really thought hard about the program before I wrote it. Okay, because I want to focus on the concept of precondition, postconditions for while loops, I have already given you some code to start with. So we're not starting with scratch. We're starting with a run method that already calls a method I've written for you called paint row. And method that, you know, that's what I call these private void things, these extra new commands that we add to Carol's vocabulary. Okay, paint row does what you think. It's gonna take one row and paint the entire thing. I'm gonna quickly show you what it does, but really we're gonna solve this problem assuming that I've written a correct paint row for you. Paint row does this thing well. While front is clear, paint one square, then move. And that'd be all fine, and we could just repeat this while loop, but there's a little bit of a fence plus problem. Turns out if you have a world of size 10, for example, there's 10 squares you want to paint, and you want to move nine times. This loop will repeat nine times, so it'll be nine paint squares, nine moves, and turns out we need to have this loop in a half concept, so we have to paint that very last square. Again, don't worry too much about the details of paint row. You can take it as a given that paint row is gonna fill one entire world with color. And even more importantly is you don't, you don't have to understand paint square. You can check it out. It uses this cool random command which doesn't show up on your homework. Random returns true half the time and returns false half the time. So pretty much what paint square is gonna do is half the time it's gonna make a current square blue and half the time it's gonna make the current square green with some randomness so that our worlds look really pretty. Okay, so what does this code that I've already given you do? Well, let's write, run our random painter. So our random painter does this. Carol starts and chugs away. Go Carol, yeah. Paint in a row, exactly. So it calls paint row once. Carol starts in a precondition uh, at, you know, kind of facing the row Carol wants to be painting. And the post condition is Carol is at the end of a row that has just been painted. Ooh, how exciting. You're like, wow, this seems like the problem's almost solved. Not quite, it turns out the hardest part of the problem has yet to be filled in. The hardest part of the problem is how do we get paint row to repeat a bunch of times for all the different rows? Pretty much we're gonna have to loop. Now there's two different loops that we know in CS or in Java, and it turns out there's pretty much only two loops that I ever use in my life. Um, one of them is a while loop, that's for when you don't know how many times you want to repeat, and the other one's a for loop when you know ahead of time when you're programming how many rows there are. While I'm programming, I don't know how many rows there were, are, because I said Carol could live in a world of any size. So I kind of, I want to be repeating, and the right loop to use is my while loop. Now the while loop needs a little condition here. Hmm, now I, 
we're going to think about the condition, but I'm going to put in a, a filler condition for now. I kind of want to repeat, like, while I'm not done, <laughs> and what done, jeez, I wish that existed, uh, while it's not the top row, for example, now that's not a condition in Carol, but let's just put in a filler thing so that while we're thinking about this problem, we can re remember that we kind of re want to repeat this while we're not done. What do we want to repeat? Well, we want to repeat painting a row, but I think we all know that just repeating the process of painting row is not what we want, because, you know, if we call paint row from the post condition of paint row, then it's just going to, like, have Carol start a paint row call here, and that's not going to do anything useful. Really, we have to repeat both painting a row and doing some moving. And I am being purposely vague, because I want to articulate this problem that you have to solve, both for this little demo that I'm doing now, but also when you're writing Checkerboard Carol. You have to simultaneously come up with both what you're going to do after your paint a row and what is the condition for the while loop. And solving those two problems simultaneously turns light out it's pretty difficult. Now, the way to make it a lot more simple, and the whole purpose of this demo the demonstration is to get you to think very clearly about preconditions and postconditions. To put it succinctly, every time we finish this while loop, there is a post condition of the while loop. This post condition of the while loop is really important because it has to match with both the precondition of paint row. So wherever we leave Carol at the end of this while loop has to be an appropriate starting point for painting row. But in addition to being an appropriate starting point for painting row, it also has to be an uh, appropriate post condition that is useful for whatever condition we put in the while loop. So this doing some moving has got to set us up in a particularly careful way. Set us up. So we're both ready for this precondition and ready for this conditional check in the while loop. So this is the hardest part of the problem. It's so hard that whatever post condition we decide for doing some moving, it's probably going to be easy to code up relative to making the decision what is the post condition I want. So before we write any code, now you understand the problem, let's think about what could this post condition be? After Carol paints a row and does some moving, what is this post condition? And you know, what is this condition and how are they gonna all match up? Okay, there's a whole bunch of ideas that we could think of for what doing some moving could do as a post condition. Definitely we want doing some moving to set us up on the next row somewhere. But there's a bunch of ways that we can do that. One of the most common ways is to think of my most efficient solution. The most efficient solution will have do some moving, get Carol just to be exactly where Carol is, but in the row above, maybe facing the row. So from this precondition, do some moving would put Carol maybe on this row facing to Carol's west. And if we called paint row from there, that's a fine preconditioning of Carol's facing this direction. We call paint row, we'll go bloop, 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 all the way to the start of row two. Then maybe do some moving, will get us up to this next row facing east. And in this concept, I'm saying, I want Carol to kind of be moving around in a snaking pattern. That's really efficient. You know, that's a very small number of Carol commands. However, you know, if writing that code, maybe it's a little hard, but the trickiest part is not going to be writing the code for doing some moving so that Carol does the snaking thing. The hardest part is that while that post condition seems good, it's really inconvenient for the while loop condition. So we want to repeat this until we get to the top row, right? Well, if we've got this post condition where Carol could be facing east, so post is Carol faces east or west, man, that is a really hard post condition to think of our stopping condition. So like Carol could be stopping when Carol's in this position facing west or Carol's in this position facing east, depending on the size of the world. And boy, is that hard to come up with a while loop. And what I'm going to say is, instead of trying to come up with this condition for the while loop, which is really difficult, the mistake was not thinking of the appropriate post condition for doing some moving and not kind of taking into account that we don't care about the most Carol command by Carol command efficient solution. That doesn't matter. Actually, in your lives of programming, those small sorts of optimizations never matter. Instead, what's more important is writing programs that are correct 
and programs that are written in a beautiful way so it's obvious that they're, they're correct. So that when it comes to like making this work on different size world, it's much easier to extend and understand. Let's think about this problem again. What post condition do we want? And I encourage you to think about what would be the ideal post condition because writing do some moving will be easy no matter what post condition we want. Here's another post condition. Let's say my ideal post condition is, hmm, what do I really want? Well, when I called paint row, Carol was at the start of the row facing east. It would be super awesome if the post condition of do some moving put Carol in the next row, again at the start, again facing east. So we can call do some moving, bring Carol from here over there, then we'll call paint row, do some moving will bring Carol from here to up there facing east, paint row will make Carol go, and we'll repeat this over and over again. The really nice thing about this, so like if we had the post condition of Carol being that Carol is on the next row facing east. And I put that in all caps because really my post condition that I want is that after we call do some moving, we are guaranteed that Carol is facing the eastern direction. The reason that's so nice is, yes, that is a precondition for paint row. So if every time Carol's on a new row facing east, that's an appropriate place to call paint row from. But more importantly, it's also a really consistent place for Carol to be in, which makes writing this while loop condition much easier. So we want to keep repeating. If we're in this situation, repeat. If we're in this situation, repeat. And eventually, when we get to this very final situation, we want Carol not to repeat because Carol's on the very last row. And it turns out, since we know Carol's always facing east, there's a really easy condition here, which is that if Carol's left is blocked, you're done. You're on the top row. And if in all these rows, Carol's left is clear when Carol's facing east. And this one, Carol's facing uh, blocked. So while uh, left is clear. Great. Um, let's change the name of do some moving. Let's call it change row. So paint row change row is going to paint row change row. And the post condition we've already decided is that Carol is on the next row facing east. Appropriate precondition for paint row and also appropriate precondition for this end of loop check. So we solve two problems simultaneously by choosing this ideal post condition. I haven't written the code yet, but now I know the contract for change row. The precondition is that Carol is at the end of a row, painted row, or of a row. And the post condition is that Carol is at the start of a next row facing east. Okay, so you know, this could change row could have two parts. It could be like return to start, um, and we be like, ooh, return to start, and then, oh, I want to call it change row. Hmm. Oh, okay. Let's say return, let's write return to start really quickly. So maybe return to start is turn around, and then move to a wall. Move to wall I haven't written, but move to wall is very simple to write. I can just do while front is clear. Now, I, while I'm writing this, remember that the point is not how I write the code. You guys could write this code if you wanted. The point is to come up with code that matches this precondition post condition. Since I've already decided my precondition post condition, most of the problems solved. So return to start. Turn around, move to wall. Uh, now Carol's facing west after return to start. So we have Carol turn right, uh, move and turn right, and that will put Carol at the beginning of the next row. And so um, we could call this another function like bump up row, but because the focus is really this while loop in this demo, let's not worry too much about it. Now you might be concerned that I wrote the wrong code here. I didn't, and really don't worry so much about that as much as did I choose good pre and post conditions. Um, and you know, let's give it a shot. So I think I wrote code that matches this pre and post condition contract. Um, do, 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 do. Let's run it. Okay, so if you start this program, now Carol's calling paint row. Now Carol's calling change row, which returns the start and then turns right. And now Carol's calling paint row again, because this condition did pass. So change row will be called now. And then we're gonna hit that condition, it passed, so we're calling paint row again. Uh, and we're gonna repeat this process a whole bunch of times. And it looks like we have a solution to our problem. Isn't that nice? Oops, I guess we didn't quite have a solution. And um, if we think about this, uh, it turns out the reason we don't have a solution, the reason Carol didn't paint this very last row, is for the exact same off by one or fence post problem that we've seen in class. You know, 
Think about the number of times Carol wants to paint a row. It's 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 rows Carol has to paint. How many times should we call change row? Well, actually, it turns out only 9 times because 1 will bring you to this row 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We want to change row nine times and we want to paint row ten times. This loop with the condition we have is going to repeat nine times. So we do nine paint rows and nine change rows, and that's great, except it leaves one row unpainted. The solution to this fence post problem is what we call a loop and a half. So you do a loop that has a full part that has two halves, first paint row, then change row. After the loop, we're going to do the first half one extra time. Oh, sorry, I want to call it paint row because that's the half of the loop I want to do one more time, because there's one more painting that needs to happen than changing. If we run this program, I think we will find out that we have the full solution. So start the program, get Carol going a little faster. Go Carol, go Carol. Ooh, how pretty is this? I really like this demo, just for the aesthetic appeal, but also because it teaches you this very hard concept. Oh, look at that, it worked. Um, and we didn't particularly write this with the world size in mind, but you know, if you think about it, it works on all different size worlds because we use these wild loops. And you know, if we think about it, in our first strategy, we had Carol doing a zigzag. Now Carol's kind of doing this comb solution where Carol goes to the end, comes back, does the next row. That takes more effort on Carol's part. Carol is executing more commands. That is not a problem. More important to have an easy to understand piece of code than it is to have Carol minimize the number of commands. Computers are so fast, minimizing commands is hardly ever what you want to be doing. Oh, doesn't that look pretty? And you know, just to show it off, let's try it on, you know, a one by eight world. Ooh, that worked out so nicely. Okay, so we have the full solution, and the theme of this demonstration was to think about a post condition for a loop that was both an ideal state for the loop conditional check and also an ideal state for the precondition of the first statement in the while loop. That was a lot of problems to solve together. And really, the most important thing is before I even wrote code for change row, or if I, before I even wrote the condition here, I thought, what is my ideal post condition? That was my thought process. Now, this is a problem that's supposed to get you ready for checkerboard Carol. It is decidedly easier than checkerboard Carol, um, because here we have painted rows, whereas checkerboard Carol, you're doing this much more complicated action where maybe you're putting a, a, a beeper pattern which starts with a blank beeper, maybe have a beeper pattern that starts with a beeper on the first um, column, and of course that makes checkerboard Carol much harder. Having said that, you're still going to face this problem of you have to have a loop for checkerboard Carol. That loop is going to have a post condition, it's got to match both the condition of the loop and the precondition of the first row. Uh, and so you want to think about that post condition first, and thank you so much for tuning in. Um, best of luck. If for some reason you're still having trouble, don't forget that the layer, which is in the first floor of Tresseter, is going to be open from 6 p.m. to midnight tonight, and there's a lot of happy, ever-loving CS106A staff there who are, would be more than pleased to help you out. Okay, right, thanks for tuning in.